right. All right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Jamie. And this is America's Asses, a gal cast. Hello from Hello. from beautiful New Hampshire, <laughs> where it's raining as much as Seattle. <laughs> Holy moly! Let me tell you, it's been raining. We left last Wednesday, uh, the thirtieth, at two a.m. Started raining the moment we hit Indiana because Indiana's bad omen, and then <laughs> didn't stop raining until yesterday morning. Oh, it's like we have a black cloud above us, but we're spending some beautiful, much needed, wonderful one-on-one time with my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So, but yeah, we packed so how in. Was, how was your 4th of July? It was good. Oh, well, it was raining here I and mean, we didn't oh. do anything. We grilled, we used the neighbors, uh, we borrowed my sister-in-law's neighbor's grill. She lives in a condo complex. So, um, there's like four people who live in this building and she's in the middle and her one neighbor is like, ah, we're going to be gone all day. Use our grill. So we grilled up some, yeah, we grilled up some, um, some, uh, Italian sausage because, you know, his mother buys me Italian sausage because I'm Italian and then they have brats (laughs) because they're German. They have brats. So I eat the sausage. I I, I eat it all. I don't care. I love the sausage. (laughs) You know that. I made both yesterday. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. And broths. Yeah. And burgers. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So good. So, and then the rain finally stopped and everybody had their fireworks last night. So we took the kids. Well, we went hiking. New Hampshire has in the White Mountains. It's just gorgeous. We love the White Mountains and we love hiking. I mean, that's, we're big outdoorsy people when it comes to that stuff, like just Uh walking and stuff. And, um, the kids love it. We love it, whatever. And, um, so we went hiking yesterday and then we, um, came home. I cooked, I've been cooking. So they're probably enjoying you being there on Hell vacation. Yeah. Right. Because they're like, they're we're like, eating good and we don't have to go out. Right. This is a treat for us. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's why they love me. I buy my I cook my way into people's hearts. How have we we have discussed this several times? Yes. This is what yes, I do. Yes. So um, but yeah, I've been cooking my way into my in-laws' hearts and uh I've been um you know baking. I baked a cheesecake for my mother-in-law. That's what she wanted. Out of all the cakes I make, I make uh, hundreds of different cakes. I'm a baker. That's what I do. And my mother-in-law asked for cheesecake. I'm like, all right, you got it, gal. <laughs> so, like, made her Don't cheesecake. get me wrong. I love cheesecake. Right. But if However, I had the option of one of Nikki's cakes. Right. Of, of, of her plethora I'm of. I'm not picking cheesecake. Right. <laughs> But that's like, her I favorite. Think it's cheesecake so. anywhere. Right. Yeah. Well, this is but. New England. They don't really. One thing. Okay. Things I've learned about New England. Air conditioners <laughs> are almost non-existent here. <laughs> like nobody has air conditioners. Do they typically get warm weather there? No. Oh, okay. The hottest. They normally get maybe one or two 90 degree days a year. And. They normally are not as humid as it is right now. Okay. So it's just, my sister-in-law does have a a traveling air conditioner because my mother-in-law can't breathe with the humidity. So she had to order one. Like we were not prepared for that. Not like we've ever, we've, we've been to New England several times, but we've always been here like in the fall or the winter. So we don't, or in the spring. So where we would not in the midst of summer. You know, so, but, um, like right now it's 90 degrees up here in the loft. Uh, and oh lordy, yeah, but I have a fan blowing at me and hopefully you can't hear it, but no. Nope. Oh, okay, good. Um, but yeah. And then we took the kids to, because it was raining the whole time and they canceled all the fireworks on 4th of July. 
they had it the night after. So last night we took the kids to to fireworks. Did you see the video of little man watching the fireworks? Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's so stinking so cute. cute. We'll have to post it on Facebook or Instagram. I'm, I'm telling you, this little man, we've never taken them to fireworks before. Wait, They're what? seven. Yeah, I know. Wow. Wait, you live in Chicago, in the city. I know. Right. I know. Like, can't you just look out your window and, like, see them on the lake? No, yeah, we're, not, we're close to the lake. We're not that close because the um, we could see them, um, but we would have to go like on to the actual lake because they're too oh. far south. We're way north. Okay. We're like okay. almost city what about limits. Any of your north. neighbors, but yeah, still, there's nothing. Um, we are in a family dwelling among among like condominiums and apartment buildings. So it's really, there's not many people who blow off. You can hear them, but you can't mm-hmm. see them. Okay. So the reason why we haven't brought, you know, the princess and little man to fireworks because they're well, little miss has autism and loud noises really spook her, right? They really mm-hmm. cause her to, misbehave or not misbehave it's just her reaction i can't say she's yeah, misbehaving right. it's, she's it's just it's reacting overload. yes yeah. sensory overload and that's exactly mm-hmm. what it is it's sensory overload so this year we decided to get them sound canceling headphones and it worked mm-hmm. like a freaking oh charm. that's great oh good yeah if you see on the video of little man he has the these headphones on those are sound yeah. canceling headphones and okay. he is like uh, he's like, uh, like uh, somebody he, at a concert. He is like, right. Like he was at like his favorite concert, like totally rocking out and having yeah. the time of his life. Because he was yeah. having the time of his life. <laughs> yeah. It was just so great. And it was, at, it, that was the Manchester. We went to, we drove all the way out to Manchester because that's where my sister-in-law works at, in Manchester. And we just, um, parked in her works parking lot and we just saw him like on the river so we oh, just cool. yeah it was really cool it was really nice my mother-in-law just was just in heaven you know oh good yeah she hasn't seen the kids in so long and you know it's been a while and we're gonna they're coming to chicago in august so we get to see them oh, again nice. good. Yeah, my, that's like right around the corner yeah, yeah. but what my sister-in-law is bringing my mother-in-law back to Milwaukee. So uh, she's going to drive her, even though we offered to drive halfway and pick up mom, but she's like, no, I have, I have time I have to use. Otherwise I lose it. I'm like, gotcha. okay. So, so that's what they're going to do. They're going to drive and drop mom off in Milwaukee. And I mean, they'll stop by us and see us. So oh, nice. yeah. So they're going to do that. And then um, we're going to see him again. So that's cool. good. Yeah. So how was your 4th of July? I'm sorry. I'm just like dominating the conversation. So sorry. No, no worry. <laughs> What'd you guys do? Had strawberry crush. Oh, <laughs> yes, you did. Did you, did you try it with the chocolate ice cream? No, she didn't have chocolate ice cream. Oh. Oh. But you had your strawberry crush. But you had your strawberry crush. Big oh. glass. Strawberry crush. Nice. Big solo glass with like two of the mm-hmm. ice cubes from the ice chest. Yeah. <laughs> the cooler. <laughs> and then I channeled my inner Goomba yesterday and I threw down on the grill. Nice. And Yay. Helen was like, or my aunt was like, who are you having over? And I was like, nobody, just you guys. She's like, do you see how much food you're cooking? And I was like, man, whatever. I was like, keep me proud. Leftovers. Uh-huh. Oh Everything God, freezes. So leftovers. Everything yeah. freezes. I think Aww. I made like 10 burgers, 12 brats, like eight Italian sausages, mm. corn. I made like a tortellini pasta salad. Nice. Good Lord. And all this food. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, yeah. We made, we made a lot of sausages. <laughs> we made a lot of sausages too. Um, I made this red, white, and blue jello cake. Mm-hmm. Cause it's too hot to bake, you know? You so- know what I had? What? What my cousin's husband made? Hmm. We had brisket. 
<gasps> on the grill. Oh, yum. So yeah. good. I don't think I've ever had brisket <gasps> before. Wait, oh, ever? my God. I don't think so. No, so good. If I did, I think he probably made it before. It is but, oh, so it was so delicious. Good. Oh my it was god, so good, so delicious. Yeah. Oh, that was what. That's what I had. Good for and you. And then I had burgers the next day. Okay. All right. <laughs> good. Good old American burgers. Good. Oh, by the way, welcome to America's Asses <laughs> Galcast, an MCU centric podcast by women for everybody. Right, ladies? Absolutely. You got it. <laughs> Who's covering this week? I don't Me. even. You are okay. Me, I've Sorry. had I've had this written since last Thursday. Did you? Oh my god! I I was <laughs> Jen was it, texting with Jamie, and she's like, "Wow, look at you! You're like on top of things." I was like, I "Yeah," was so because prompt. I got plans. I was like, "I got plans this weekend. I ain't got no right? time for this." So yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I watched it on Wednesday, and I think I watched it again on Wednesday night, and then I started it, and then I finished it on Thursday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Watched it Thursday morning. Yeah. Um, we did you it watch took, it on the laptop? No, we watched it on TV. We hooked up the laptop to oh, the good. TV. Even better, even yeah. better than watching well, it on the phone. Kind of. We, we watched to. it with the entire family, so we had to answer a lot of questions. We had to stop and pause mm-hmm. and blah blah blah. So, but today I found like, t- we will watch it twice. The first time, zip right. it. Second time, I'll answer your question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well. We had just Only gotten an hour. here. Not yeah, well, hour. we had just gotten here. So, you know, so then, um, and then I, uh, I watched it again today. So okay. little man and I cuddled up in the bedroom and we just watched it today on the laptop. Aww. Nice. Aww. So, but so cool. guess what? I have, I can't, God damn it. Let's try this again. <laughs> Marvel news. Marvel news. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Jonathan Majors is confirmed to play Kang the Conqueror in <gasps> Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Yes. Why does that why does that name sound familiar? Because you've heard of it. I don't know. I have doubts you've seen this, but I know you've heard his name because of this. He plays Atticus Freeman in Lovecraft Country on HBO Go. Have you seen that? Again, I'm disappointed. <laughs> right off the bat before you answer because I know you haven't no <gasps> girls googling him right now add I it know, to the list too. add it to add the, the list. list it is so good it's so weird and it's so fucking awesome Lovecraft Country so and then also he played Montgomery Allen in The Last Black Man in San Francisco another fantastic movie Oh, but I'm oh. telling you, I'm looking at him. He looks familiar. Yeah, yeah, he's been in a lot of like, he was in um we uh When We Rise. It was like a mini series. He was in that. He hasn't been in a lot. He's been in a lot mm-hmm. of like commercials. Like, I swear I've seen him Maybe in commercials. Maybe that's what it is. Right. I'm yeah. like, he's that's familiar. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, if you compare the pictures of Jonathan Majors to the artwork of the middle timekeeper in everything in Loki. They have the same facial characteristics. I'm just saying. It's a theory I'm throwing out there. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're, yeah. I think the entire series. I well, hear something after, to do with it. After the events of this episode. Oh, my God. Holy moly, girl. Like, so, I'm watching it. Like, I, I'm i just, my, my, I, I had to pick my jaw up off the floor. It Same. was amazing. Multiple times. Same. It was, it was amazing. I was like, but, what in God's green earth is fucking going on? I right. And then, of course, I'm watching it the first time. I was like, how the fuck am I going to recap this? <laughs> but that's like every episode that I recap. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, what oh am you I know what, do? though? I'm not going to lie. As I was watching it, I'm going, I'm very glad it's an episode. <laughs> <laughs> Watch next week is like even crazier. I know that always well, comes to be, bite me in the ass. Next week will well, be, be the, the presidential second. one. I bet. What do you but think? Yeah, it'll be the second to last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Oh, lordy. So yeah, that's my Marvel news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what do you got for us? Loki episode four, titled "The Nexus Event." So we see scenes from the previous episodes and this episode we don't start out with 
a song like we have the last two times. Uh, but we are taken to Asgard and we see a young Loki or Sylvie uh, playing with dragons and chip toys when Ravana or as she is that as she is there, Hunter A23. And she enters with other Minutemen and captures the child for crimes against the sacred timeline. So she, Sylvie, is sitting there playing with Valkyrie. Valkyrie. Mm-hmm. And there's a wolf and a ship. And it's just a, a nice little nod to Ragnarok. Yeah. You know? I need to watch that again. It was on this weekend, but I yes, it was it. on it was this on, weekend. It was on repeatedly this weekend. We were watching it. <laughs> I, I know. I was I was a little busy. But it, but I still watched Captain America and Winter Soldier. <laughs> I know. I texted her at, I don't know, it was like fucking always 11 on, or 11.30. It's always on, on 4th of July because oh, yeah. it's his birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So she texts me. <laughs> I was Go like. Ahead. Yeah. Hey, are you watching? She's like, oh, silly sis. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I was like, oh, silly I sister. You I know better. Should have known. Yeah. <laughs> and then I text you guys my favorite scene of Winter Soldier. No, I Civil called, War. I called that that was Civil your favorite War. scene. Yeah. yeah. Civil War when Captain America is trying to pull the helicopter. He pops his- Pops muscle. Yeah. yeah. As of, before it came out, I'm like, this is Alyssa's favorite episode or favorite scene. And then like two minutes later, I get the text. I was like, ha ha. <laughs> so, okay. Back to the recap. Sorry. We digress. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So Sylvie is little Loki or little Sylvie whatever you want to call her Mm -hmm. uh she gets taken through the tva and even then we see the same agents that we saw in the first episode that welcomed loki Mm -hmm. you know the one that had the list of everything that they had ever said and then the one who had taken the picture of the aura it's all the same agents Mm -hmm. even back then um as ravana's taking the young variant loki to the judge the child fights back and steals her temp pad and escapes. <laughs> and Nirvana's remembering all this as we see her walking into uh, a meeting with the timekeepers. All right, so I got some. Start. I got some tidbits for you, girl. Okay. Um, because all those rainy days, I had all the time in the world <laughs> to find tidbits. So, yeah. Um, I'm gonna throw this out there. Do you think maybe the reason why Sylvie doesn't like to sit with her back to the door is because the timekeepers, the TBA, oh, came in yes. mm-hmm. with her back to the door and scared the shit out of her and changed her life forever. Yep. Very yes. traumatic situation. That's number one. That's totally genius. agree. Mm-hmm. Number two. Now, this is that was more of a do you think theory kind of thing. Now, the, here's a tidbit. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait. It's a numbers thing. Do you have any numbers things, um, Jamie, for uh, Ravana? Um, you know, a little, but you first. Okay. So uh, Ravana, she's like attempting to arrest, you know, and process Sylvie. So Ravana's number when she was trying, when she was, you know, a TVA agent, you know, a Minuteman, her mm-hmm. number was A23. Yep. And that is in reference to Avengers number 23, which um, is not only representing uh, Ravana's first appearance in Marvel Comics, but also features King the Conqueror, who we all know she gets it on with. Hi. They, get, they get all jiggy <laughs> together. They, get all they do the little jiggy jiggy. Bump the nasties. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's what I have for that section oh what did you have did you have anything jane uh that was the same stuff so the credits roll and then we see mobius greet ravana after her meeting uh saying it did not go well and how jarring it is meeting with them and they blame her for what happened with loki and sylvie Uh, mobius believes 
in order to find where they are, uh, he needs to talk to uh, C20. Uh, Ravana tells him that he can't talk to her because she's dead. Like, okay, yeah. that just happened. Right. Like, when C20 was taken back to the TVA, she could barely speak because of the enchantments that Sylvie placed on her. And that is why she died. Or according to Ravana, that's how she died. Yeah. Uh, Ravana wants to keep this imp- information between the two of them so people don't start panicking. Whatever. What? <clears throat> Please. <laughs> I don't think people would quote start panicking. I think people would just be um, aware. You know, right. they just don't want to like, talk to her. Right. But that just be a little, yeah. a little fishy. Yeah. Um. So then we jump to Lamentis, uh, where oh. the meteors and the moon are getting increasingly closer to demolishing the planet. This uh, Lo- is the scene, ladies. <laughs> yes. Uh, the scene. Loki and Sylvie are watching and waiting because they know the end is near. He apologizes to her and she tells him that she remembers her life on Asgard. Uh, The universe wants to break free, so it manifests chaos, she tells him, including her being born, the goddess of mischief. And because that created too much of a timeline, the TVA showed up and erased her reality. Question. One of my initial questions was, what's the beef with all the Lokis? Why does the TVA have such a beef? I missed that part. So wait, just because they're mischievous, they want them gone? Or is that still a reasonable question? I think for her, it's because she was born, she was a girl. So oh. she was the goddess of mischief. <gasps> instead of the, the god of instead mischief. Instead of the god of mischief. Sweet I Jesus. Think- How the fuck did I miss that? I don't know. I'm a blood-burning, card-carrying feminist, and I fucking missed that. Whatever. You need to watch things with the captions. You'll catch more. To be honest, true. Start doing that too. Trust me, you need to watch it with the captions. To, To be honest, to be honest. I didn't really pay very close attention uh, until the second time. And even then I had my son like falling asleep on right. me. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get yeah. It. So, but the captions do help. Okay. Captions do help. I do have a couple of tidbits. Mm-hmm. So um, like I said, this is the scene that we all thought was, was Natasha. Uh, no, it was Sylvie. And it's not for mm-hmm. It's lamentous. Um, and this is the exact scene in the uh, promos that we've all seen. So Mm -hmm. Sylvie says that she wasn't supposed to exist. So she had a jump from one apocalypse to the next with the temp ad that she had stolen when she was a child. So we go quick back to the TVA and Mobius and B-15 are trying to find, um, which disaster that they're hiding in. And then we jump right back to Lamentus. And Loki and Sylvia are talking about how they always lose, but they don't die. They survive. So when Mobius and Hunter B-15 were looking for the Nexus event, on the top of the screen, you can see um, it says Morag. And that is where Peter Quill found the orb, which yes. contained the power stone. Yes. And this and that. And <gasps> yeah. in Endgame, Nebula and Rhodey were dropped off on Morag to get the <gasps> Power Stone. Get the fuck out. Nice. Yes. And that was up at the top of the screen when they were looking for Nexus events. Oh. Wow. 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 <laughs> was it? Wait, what was this one was yellow? Red. Red. Was it red? There was a lot of red hues in this one. I think you're okay. We'll get was there. It red but... this one? But, uh-huh. but the. Did that. Dumbass alert. We know that the information we are about to give you is completely inaccurate. We will discuss it next week and fix it. Please don't come at us. Now back to the podcast. We love you 3000. What did I text you? No, you said green. I know. There's so much green in the end. You told, you texted me green, but what did the one on the Tiki Talk? Red. Said it was power stone. It was red. It was- yeah. The power stone. Yeah. There's a lot of green though too. But yeah, there was a lot of red. Yeah. I know. That's why I was like, wait, what color was like I had no, to watch I think it. it I, was like, I think there was more red in this episode. Okay, let's okay. explain for those who are just popping in. 
Yeah. Why are these bitches talking about colors? So our theory, what we had seen on the Tiki Talks, was that every episode, including this one and the three previous episodes, are all referencing a different time stone. So like the first episode was all orange. The next one was all, what was it, blue? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other one was purple. Mm-hmm. So now this episode we think is more red, red. for which one? The Mind Stone. Wait. The Mind. No. No. Mm. Power Stone. Wait. Yes. No. What did power. the Tiki? Yeah. Power Stone. The Power Stone. Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. was, wasn't that on Morag? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's where so, they went to go get it. Yes. That was. And Jamie said that that was referenced in yes. the TVA. It's it's a it's a very good theory, ladies. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that I think is 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 coming to fruition. Mm-hmm. So Nikki, you had something about yes, yes. Sylvie. Yeah. Yes. So when Sylvie says, "Do you think what makes a Loki a Loki is that we're just destined to lose?" Um, that's not the first time that that whole idea was brought up in two thousand. In, in the Avengers in 2012, Agent Coulson told Loki, you're going to lose. It's your mm-hmm. nature. And right. um, so he, you know, 2011. Coulson, yeah, no, yeah. 2012. No, 12. No, never mind. You're right. You're right. You're right. 2012. Yeah. And so Coulson says, you know, it's in your nature. You're going to lose. You lack conviction as, you know, and then that's when he, you know, killed him. Killed but him. <laughs> stabs him, him through the back. The back. So, but I'm just like that. Did that because we're at 2012 Loki, right? This is 2012 mm-hmm. Loki. Yeah. This was after he killed Coulson. Just so, after. Just after he killed Coulson. Yeah. So um, maybe that's like fresh, and he's like, "I'm gonna prove that fucker wrong." Could be. Maybe I don't know. That's a, that's, a, that's an All idea. Right. But so Loki is amazed how Sylvie was able to continue to run away from the TVA and hide from them since she was a young child. Uh, as they're talking, we see a branch coming off the timeline. Because uh, they held and, hands. Yes. As Lamentis is just inches away from total annihilation, Loki and Sylvie are like gazing into each other's eyes. <laughs> when... <laughs> two doorways appear uh the pair are captured by mobius and b15 and are taken away separately and loki is insulted that sylvie has more guards than he does (laughs) he's like like why did why does she have more people taking her like uh i'm the superior loki what is that about right right. (laughs) so mobius pulls up uh a red archway for Loki to go into. Oh boy. But, but as he's uh trying to, you know, divert not going in there, uh, he tells him that the TVA is lying to him. And we see him being taken to Asgard, where Lady Sif, yay, Lady Sif, uh berates him, kicks him in the crotch, and punches <laughs> him for cutting off half of her hair. She tells him that she hopes. He knows he deserves to be alone and always will be. And Loki says that he's in a bad memory prison. uh, And he keeps, uh, so this keeps getting replayed in a time loop. Like she keeps coming in, keeps punching him, keeps kicking him in the nuts and uh, berates him and keeps doing it. Every time he gets, when he gets kicked and he comes up, he does the hair flip. Each oh. time he's on the ground, <laughs> does the hair flip? So listen, he does the lady, hair flip. Every I have time. to tell you, I I'm not a fan of like long stringy hair like that. I'm not. I, I'm a fan of long hair on men, but it has yeah. to be perfectly coiffed. Okay, uh-huh. it has to be taken care of, not stringy, like full Run of product through it. Yeah, uh, like greasy. No, mm-hmm. that's just a no go. But. The way he flips his head because is just the season of Tom. It is. It's Tommy season. <laughs> it's Tommy mm, season. That's Tommy. Why. Anything I, he does. 
Well, <laughs> Nikki will be. I don't know. It, it is Tom. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not Loki. It's Tom. Because the more and more I see him being interviewed, especially when he's being interviewed by kids or like kid, he like gravitates towards babies. I can't stop watching these stupid videos lately. <laughs> he's like, is that a baby? Is that a baby? Bring the baby here. He's like. <laughs> They're all like, I guess to be a Marvel actor, you have to love babies because they're all fucking (laughs) like that. They're all like, I hear a baby in the background. Yeah, because what, like 90% of the guys are single and And don't have kids. Really? (laughs) Well, Sebastian, Chris, Evans. Yes. um, Both Toms. Both Toms. Uh, And that's it, right? No, that's about it. Never mind. Again, I wanted to point out when uh, Mobius was ushering Loki in um, to sit down and have their little conversation before he puts him in the, you know, the red door. Mm -hmm. Um, He takes him into Time Theater 25. And that that can be a reference to the comic comic Journey into Mystery issue number 25. Mm. And that comic issue deals with um, aliens erasing a man's memory so he doesn't tell anyone where they are. <gasps> Get out! Whoa. Fantastic. Which, Which, when we hear of all the things that are unfolding and, you know, Ravana trying to hide what's going on with C20. Holy mm-hmm. crap! Things are kind of making sense. That mm-hmm. is huh? fantastic. Oh, there's my numbers girl right there. Ooh. I hear. I I noticed that and I was like, nope, I'll let Jamie do it. She's got Don't the worry. numbers. I got it for Sylvie too. Yep. I noticed Ooh. that one too. <laughs> I'll wait till so, you get there though. All right. So Mobius goes to Ravana's office where he has to speak to Sylvie since Loki's in the time loop. And his request is denied, saying no one will talk to her. And to break Loki and find out what caused the Nexus spike. Mm -hmm. So on the way back to interrogate Loki, Mobius stops outside of Sylvie's room, where B-15 and the other agents are guarding the door. He says they have brought in Titans, Kree, and vampires. (gasps) Vampires. Yeah. But the two orphan demigods are the worst. B-15 asks what Loki said to Mobius, and he shares to her that he said the the TVA is lying to him, and she finds it very curious. Oh, boy. Do you think the fact that he said, well, Kree we've seen, Titans we've seen, Mm -hmm. but vampires, Blade Reboot. Blade reboot right there. <laughs> You're all about the blade, man. Well, vampires, hey, I'm old school vampire fan. Okay. I'm talking, you know, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, <laughs> suck my blood and do me. You know, I, 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 before vampires could sparkle in the fucking sunlight. Okay. <laughs> Jamie, was there anything you noticed about the room? being outside of sylvie's interrogation room (laughs) what about the numbers the numbers like you know so she is being held in time theater 47 Mm. and 47 could be a nod to what if issue number 47 (gasps) what which follows what would have happened if loki had thor's hammer not thor (gasps) And we know that What If is an upcoming Disney Plus series. Yes! Fantastic. And isn't he, he's going to be in it, right? Yep, 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 yep. yep. Is he? Yeah, yeah. He's nice. supposed to be in it, yeah. Nice. I am so excited so, for that. Well, series. also, too, well, 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 this can wrap around again at the end, too. Okay. At the very, at the very post-credit end. scene. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, at the very, very end. Yeah. Very, very, very. So, yeah. Okay. Ooh. I like that one. I'm so excited for that series. <laughs> I know. Um, as Lady Sif is about to kick him in the balls for the umpteenth time, Loki <laughs> begs her to First, stop. What, you know, I want to point something out. If she's kicking him in the balls, why is he holding his thigh and not his balls? 
He kept holding the inside of his thigh. I mean, does his dick lay that low? I was going to say, maybe he's a low low hanger. He can't be a low hanger. Not with those tight pants, honey. No way. Maybe he puts it down one of the sides of his pants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's on that side. (laughs) Like, like what's his name from, uh, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, Of course, now that we're... (laughs) Um, this is Spinal Tap. He has like a cucumber. He puts Tom in this. Oh no, the movie. This is Spinal Never Tap. Mind, wrong person. <laughs> I was like, John Hamm does that. Does he? Google him. Get out! He puts like a fake dildo down there. No, not fake. This is real. <laughs> <laughs> How do what? you know? Well, why I'm asking you that? Of course you know. Jamie, come on. Yeah, of course you know. <laughs> Well, oh, maybe man. that's what Jeremy Renner does, you know? I don't know. But he was just holding his thigh, and it bugged me wait, that he didn't hold his balls. Wait. Okay. Until you watch Sex Life on oh, Netflix. To okay. I to watch, I think I want to watch it by myself, though. You, Yeah. You might like watching it better by yourself. Yeah, so I it's something I got to wait until myself. the kids go to bed and Mr. Absolutely. Okay. And Mr. Big yeah, is yeah. working nights. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I watched it. In, there's like what? Like six episodes, eight episodes. Oh, I can get like that done in one night. Yeah. I did that in two days. Yeah, I could do it. Yeah. Well, by the time I started it. Yeah. I watched it in two days. So, okay. but you need to watch it in the locker room scene that's all i'm saying okay okay all right (laughs) speaking of that recommendations i will take your recommendation and i will uh raise you one blade runner has it happened yet (laughs) you just no you just told us like you just told us that that doesn't count you're just upping it right now okay you're just right. you just no i did not tell you just last week i told no. you multiple weeks ago but you're raising it now oh boy. you're raising it now all right all right you know what i'll bring this up once i'm done watching <laughs> sex life okay. then that gives me the right to bring it up continue okay, story okay okay um, love you love you love you <laughs> we love you too <laughs> so loki begs her to stop He apologizes and said he did it because he thought it was funny and he craves attention, meaning cutting off half of her hair. Uh, (laughs) He realizes it is, it was cruel and he's a narcissist who is scared of being alone. She says he is and will always, and always will be. (laughs) Mobius brings. That's just me. Oh, Like, what did you send? What'd you send? On him. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. Mr. Ham. Ham is hung. Wow. Really? Cow. Oh, How do men walk around with these? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, apparently down the right side of his pants. Apparently. Shit. Oh my gosh. So wait, is he yeah. wearing bell bottoms? No, that's his other. Never mind. Never no. mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it's not like Mr. Ham. This is like all the time. Like there are and he's not wearing but pictures. wait. Can I just point out he's not wearing an undershirt underneath his dress shirt, and you could totally see right through it. it that's just gross looking. I wasn't looking there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes were diverted a little south of there. Yeah. <sighs> I, I, was not, I was not watching for that. You know, all these celebrities, whatever. I'm dedicated to Mr. Big. I don't even look at other celebrities. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> bullshit. Bullshit not- <laughs> artist. I call bullshit. Uh, listen to like four episodes back. Five episodes back, please. Yeah, the OG no. sticks plus no better. All right. Oh, they do. They do. They do. <laughs> sure do. They're calling BS on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I'll take it. I know. I'm yeah. I, I'm a bullshit artist. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm an, you yeah. know, good. Yeah. It is what it is. But yeah, John Ham. Holy hum. John Hung. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. And there are lots more pictures just like that. Really? I'm going to put this in my safekeeping file, my secret 
folder. So your hidden, your hidden folder. My hidden folder in my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I didn't even know you can do that. Oh yeah. Sure. When you have a husband that doesn't know how to work the fucking iPhone, sure. Every folder is the hidden folder. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that that was an option. Well, whatever. Yeah. Didn't make folders. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't and then you just and you just right hide. up here. So what <laughs> you do is you make a folder, and now he listens to this. So now he's gonna know. But you well, just delete it. it. Right. Then don't. Then wow. crop this oh, out. I, secrets away. What if some of the OG six have these hidden thingies? Well, that's what I want to like help the OG plus, six plus man. <laughs> but then you're also hurting yourself. I'll let you know how to make your head. You know what? If email you want to know, yes. Yeah. If you want to know, email, email us. us. At America's Asses Galcast yeah. at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. We're almost okay. done, ladies. This is going quick tonight. Yeah, I, bought, I got about uh, like a page and a half. I'm like, yeah, yeah like halfway We're through. We're like halfway through the notes. episode already. Yep. Mobius brings Loki back from his Asgard scene, and he wants to know what he meant when he said the TVA was lying. Uh, Mobius wants to know if Loki and Silly, Silly, <laughs> Sylvie, <laughs> if Loki and Sylvie have been working together this whole time, or if he works for her. And in, a, in an attempt to not get kicked in the nuts again, he tells Mobius that Sylvie came to him on Asgard years ago. And then she took him to one of the apocalypses where they hatched their plan together. He says Sylvie is a pawn and he'll dispose of her when something big happens. Mobius says no need to worry. They already pruned her. And <gasps> the look on Loki's face oh. is like... He was devastated. Like he was. He was completely surprised and very sad. Yeah. So, as we said, Mobius said she was prune. And Mobius accuses Loki of liking Sylvie and questions if it was reciprocated. We find out that Sylvie actually wasn't prune. Um, and Mobius believes that this is utter chaos, that Loki fell for a version of himself and if that makes him the ultimate narcissist. <gasps> right? I'm like, yeah. Jamie's all about this. <laughs> yeah. She was like, Ugh. well, we right. all were like, Bleh. yeah, exactly. But there's something sweet about it, too. Like, he's got her back. But I want yeah, it to be do. a brother sister. I want it to be a brother sister. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, I'm like, you not... can have her back and not have her front. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. That's good. Oh, I love you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Mobius finally finds out that her name is Sylvie because uh, he's just been calling her Loki variant. Like, yeah, the Loki yeah. variant um, and says that she's alive for now. Uh, the pair's interests are aligned because they both want to overthrow the timekeepers. And Loki tells Mobius that all the TVA agents are variants that they were kidnapped from their timelines by the timekeepers and erase who erase their memories, memories only Sylvie can get with her enchantments. And Mobius just thinks that this is another lie, another con from Loki. And uh, he says that he's closing the case because he no longer needs Loki and takes him away through the red portal. So then we jump to see Agent B-15 in the hallway contemplating something. And she goes into Sylvie's interrogation room. And Sylvie says she doesn't know her name because her name is a number. And I just find that really sad. Wait, wait, wait. I think you forgot a part. She, uh, Mobius went to B-15 and asked if he could talk to the variant right to sylvie yeah that was before right and then she's like did did loki say anything to you yeah i said that oh you did i did, did. I? and that was when i asked jamie what never mind fuck then it then i asked I'm jamie sorry. about the number i'm an idiot it's, no you're sorry. fine <laughs> hey i did the same <sighs> thing last week we all have yeah, to take our turns know. i know we're not paying attention Jesus. Fuck sorry 
you're good. You're good. Um, okay, so Sylvie says she doesn't know her name, meaning B-15's name, because her name is a number. And I find that sad that in this place or yeah. in TVA, they're not even allowed a name. I know. That they are, what do you think her name would be? Reference. What do you think her name would be? But I want to know. So Ravana was originally A23. Mm -hmm. Then how did she get a name? If she, you know. Because she's fucking, name... she's fucking Kong. Yeah. She's Either fucking that or a big was that guy. Name before she became a, a timekeeper. Why yeah, did Mobius have... get his name? Right. Like, right. why does it Mobius? Why is it? Why isn't he a number? Right. Right. I mean, hmm. I don't think this is. Although that is a very good question. Now I'm probably gonna overthink it. Now, hopefully. That has to, that'll be hopefully I'll put that one of in, our questions for clarity. I'll put that in the questions for clarity right now. Yeah. So B15 uh, tells her to follow her. Uh, but then we cut to Mobius and Ravana talking in her office, uh, celebrating the close of the case. Uh, Ravana keeps questioning Mobius on if he could go any place at any time, where would he go? Um and he's like, Miami well, Beach, that. 1992, jet ski. That's right. where he'd go. Exactly. Um, he's like, but I can go anywhere I want to. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but he doesn't want to talk about that. He wants to know why Ravana wouldn't let him talk to Sylvie and wants to know the events around what happened to C20. Mm -hmm. And he finds out that the timekeepers want to personally witness sylvie and loki being pruned and they want him there as well uh ravana takes her latest trophy that she got from whatever their capture or they're going in through the portal or whatever it's called mm -hmm. um and puts it on the shelf and mobius <sighs> switches her temp pad with his because he's starting to like question everything and he knows something's going on and he's piecing it together yep uh so then we jump to b15 uh and sylvie uh are outside of rock's cart and she reveals that when sylvie was in her head she saw something and wants to know if it was real she says she, she says happy, she was right right she says she was happy but she keeps being adamant like everybody else has been saying like no i was created by the timekeepers mm -hmm. but sylvie says she can't create memories that she could only use what's already there mm -hmm. so b15 finds out that the timekeepers took every everybody's life from them and is shown when sylvie touches her and whatever she saw she said she looked happy mm -hmm. So then we jump back to Mobius and he goes into that file area mm -hmm. and pulls up C20's record uh, from Ravana's temp pad. And it shows up that she's deceased and finds a video of the interrogation between her and Ravana. Uh, C20 confesses that what she saw was a memory somewhere she's been before the TVA. She had a whole life before the sacred timeline, and she tells everyone that the variants and Ravana, or tells everyone their variants, and Ravana comes in and says she's going to end this, and that's when Mobius looks like he's starting to believe what Loki says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you were on a roll, and I didn't really want to Sorry. interrupt you. No, <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Um. So. I read a theory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we may just want to put this in the theory category okay. here. Mm -hmm. um, when Mobius is in Ravana's office um, and he's, you know, kind of finishing up everything and they're having their discussion, he looks down at that damn pen again. Mm -hmm. And it's yes. a Franklin D. Roosevelt High School pen. Mm -hmm. There are theories out there that people are thinking that this might be you know how like Ravana keeps trophies that mm -hmm. this might be <gasps> a trophy from when they captured Mobius in real life. No. Oh, 
Oh it is my a theory. God. That, oh my God. If that happens, that would be magnificent. I wonder then, if we're going to find out where he's from. I hope so. I really do. I and then so um, when he gives her Sylvie's sword and mm-hmm. she turns her back to go put it on the, you know, the shelf with all her trophies, mm-hmm. she okay. puts it next to her TBA helmet oh, nice. um, because we learn that Sylvie is the one who got away from her. So it's right. really fitting that she's taking Sylvie's sword and putting it by her helmet. Right. right 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 like i finally got this this right. trophy and it's going next to where when i was you know a minute man yeah. or yeah. an agent and then the only other thing um to just mention is when uh, mobius is looking at the temp pad and he is looking at hunter c20's file mm-hmm. her deceased date is showing as 3 15 2050 <gasps> which corresponds to the rocks cart disaster in 2050 so i wasn't even looking i didn't even know there was i didn't even yeah that's good good job jamie good eye oh thanks Thanks good eye with the numbers (laughs) doing the homework yeah so loki is once again back in asgard and mobius barges in and says that the connection that the pair had had caused the nexus event and can bring the whole place down. Uh, Mobius doesn't know if he can trust Loki, but Loki says, how about a friend? Mobius tells Loki that he was right all along and they need to trust each other so they can save Sylvie. However, when they return, Ravana and the other guards are there and she knows that Mobius uh, took her (sighs) temp pad and he says, oh, I picked yours up by mistake. And Mobius starts to say, because he knows he's in trouble. He's busted. Yeah. And Ooh, she he says, yeah, where he would want to go if he could go anywhere, that he would go wherever he was before, wherever <gasps> his life was before the TVA oh. came along. And he questions if he had a jet ski. And at that <laughs> moment, Ravana tells the guard to prune him. And he does. And I'm like holy shit (sighs) uh loki looks utterly heartbroken yeah it looks like he's about to cry yes he's then escorted out and is told to wait at the elevators with the guards and he looks totally defeated and it's just so heart-wrenching to see his face uh, he knows he doesn't have any more tricks up his sleeve and that this is the end and it just doesn't seem like he has any fight in himself anymore. So Ravana enters Sylvie's interrogation room and notices that she's all wet and wants to know who was in there with her. And the guard tells her that B-15 was uh, insisting on going in there and they put out an alert for her. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Then the guards escort Sylvie to the same, you know, hallway by the elevators where Loki is waiting. And she asks if he's okay. And he just silently nods. Mm. Like he can't even speak. Yeah. Uh, Ravana takes the pairs into the elevators alone. And Sylvie asks if she remembers her. And she does. And Sylvie wants to know what her nexus event was that was so important to Ten take out. her life from. I'm so sorry, but I have to say every time in this program, they say Nexus Mm -hmm. event. I think of like the, the Nexus, um, hair commercial where they're in the pool or the water and they, yes, (laughs) (laughs) because Nexus is just, you know, great fucking hair stuff, you know? Oh Yeah. (laughs) I just every uh, time they say that it's like ha- great hair products are hard to come by you know it's yes. like nexus <laughs> sorry go ahead every time no, you're fine. I just think of a, of a, a model Whoosh. you know him <laughs> with, what loki doing the hair flip exactly yeah. loki doing the hair flip for ne- with his nexus products <laughs> do they still sell nexus yeah they do okay my mom so. used to use it yeah yeah my mom i used to sell it Really? We, used to, we used to carry it when I worked, I worked at a beauty parlor. I was, uh, when I was in high school, I just like 
you know, did the cash register and made appointments and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And we used to sell Nexus. Oh, oh interesting. <laughs> um, so uh, she wants to know what was so important to take her life away from her. And Ravana smugly says that she doesn't remember. Whatever. Um, did you see what I had posted on our Facebook page about Captain or um, Director Douche, Captain Douche? And now right. she, is, she is Agent Douche. Yes. Yeah. We got the douche. The, the, we got the, the triple douches. Triple douche. <laughs> the douche tet. Yeah. No, the, no, quartet is four. Yeah. So the douche. Douche the, triple. The douche triad. Triad. There Ooh, you go. Yeah. Um, because she knows. She, yeah, of she, course, she remembers what yeah. it was, but we yeah. don't know. Right. If it was because she was born a girl, like if that was her nexus event. Oh, that's or, ter- yeah. I wonder if we'll find out. Um, right. But the elevator lets them off to the room with the timekeepers and the timekeepers tell Sylvie that she had she is a cosmic disappointment (gasps) and Loki states that he has been killed more times than he could count so he tells them to do their worst and it's the timekeepers are very robotic and stiff Um, the guards are told to delete the variants when B-15 enters and removes the neck monitors off of the pair, stating for all time, always. <gasps> she tosses Sylvia her sword and a fight ensues. Uh, Ravana wants the timekeepers protected. Uh, at this point, B-15 gets knocked out and Ravana and Sylvie fight and Sylvie knocks her out as well while Loki kills the guards that he's fighting. Mm-hmm. The, mi- the main timekeeper says that she is a child of the timekeepers and that they could talk. She throws a stick at him. I think it's their, you know, the minute man. Yeah. Yeah. The minute man baton throws it at him and it decapitates him. <gasps> and we find out that he is a mindless Android and isn't real. And this all seems very wizard of Oz. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. You know, somebody they're not real, but there's somebody behind the, Mm-hmm. The screen behind mm-hmm. the ca- the curtain. Don't pay um, no attention to the man behind the curtain. Exactly. I mean, can we just like give Sam some kudos for fucking calling it when he was telling Bucky that androids, <laughs> aliens, and wizards. Every time we fight, it's one of the big three. You're right. right. <gasps> so now they're fighting. Oh, shit. You Thank were you, right. Sam. Yes. Yes. Abs- that's such a good observation yes. <gasps> so now they are fighting androids very good very um good. so the question still lies as to who created the tba loki starts to tell sylvie something very important and it looks like he might even kiss her or i don't know what he was Ugh. about to do yeah <laughs> but then what? ravana prunes him in the back in the back, like he did with Agent Coulson. Yep. Uh, the two fight, uh, Sylvie and Ravana fight, uh, and Ravana tells her to prune her, but Sylvie wants her to tell her everything first. And then the episode ends. <gasps> but wait. Or so we thought. <laughs> but wait, there's more. There's a post credit scene. <laughs> The first Holy one fuck. in the series, uh, Loki finds himself on the ground, questioning if this is hell. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the look, captions on for this one. Go the for captions it. on for yeah. this one. When he says he's questioning if this is hell, it's not H E L L. Not. H-E double hockey sticks. Right. It's H-E-L, which isn't that one of the universes or planets controlled by Hela? Yeah, it's one of the nine nine realms realms in uh, Norse mythology. mythology. Yep. And so he asks if he's dead. And then we hear a man who is Richard E. Grant say, not yet, but you will be unless you come with us. 
<gasps> and we see a kid Loki holding an alligator Loki, mm-hmm. comic book Loki, which is mm-hmm. Grant. Yeah. And Viking Loki, who looks like he's holding his own form of the hammer. Yes. And then that's it. Yes. And that's that, the end of the It episode. comes back where, like, I think it's like the reversal, like, what if? That's mm-hmm. the what if guy. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, um, crazy ass episode. Yes. <laughs> I need like, to sit and actually like the episode take Batman. it in. Yes. <laughs> um, did you see that? Okay, where do you think they're at? Do you think they're in a destroyed New York City at the end? It does look like that because it looks like yeah. Avengers Towers in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I can't wait for tomorrow. Uh, we're recording yeah. this on Tuesday. It mm-hmm. comes out tomorrow. I'm gonna it's try. Yep. Well, wait, wait, listen. Okay, so I'm gonna try. Sidebar, sidebar. <laughs> I'm gonna try and edit this on my way uh-huh. home. I have 18 hours. However, okay. I um, I'm not gonna make any promises. It will be done okay. by Thursday night. It will be done by Thursday right. night. We didn't promise anybody anything until what Thursday anyway, right? So right. Yeah. we're good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll be we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Ladies, fantastic. Fantastic. Yay. Alyssa, great job. Fantastic. I kind of almost forgot what I had written about because it was like almost a week did. ago that I did this. And I'm like, should I watch the episode again? That's how I was last week. Yeah. Last yeah. episode. I wrote it like the next day. I was like, right. oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. All right. But well, recapping it, it just brought it all back. So, yeah. Yeah. No, okay. My part. Do we have any other tidbits? I have no more tidbits. No. I had all of mine already. Okay. Uh, there are no answered questions for clarity because nothing's been um, answered. So uh, no. we have no clarified questions of clarity. Hopefully in the next two episodes. Hopefully. Maybe questions for crossed? clarity. Well, these are the questions we have for clarity. We have the ones from past episodes. Uh, did the TVA create that variant Loki? Uh, we still don't have a definitive answer, right? Mm-hmm. What do the colors mean? We're figuring that out. I think we know, but we're figuring it mm-hmm. out. Which low? Okay, this is what I've added. Is uh, which Loki is the original Loki? Because I'm dying to know. Out of all yeah. those Lokis, is it Grant? Is he the original Loki? Mm-hmm. Is it? I mean, who is? Because he's like comic book Loki. Right. So is it alligator Loki? <laughs> no. I want to know how there is an alligator Loki. I know, right? And then um although it could be, remember in what was it, Thor Dark World when he thinks Loki turned himself into a piece of paper? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I mean, maybe he could turn was- himself into an alligator. An alligator. Yeah, maybe, know. maybe. I don't know. Oh, and then we have the one we came up with during the episode, during just mm-hmm. now. Yeah. How did everybody at the TVA get their names and numbers? Right. Um. And then I have another question: like, what is the TVA's beef with all these Lokis? Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. not just Sylvie, but like all of the Lokis. Why do they want to prune them all? Like, what's right. going on? What's the reason? And if Loki gets pruned, but he sees the other Lokis, is Mobius there? That's what I was right? thinking. Yeah. Like, did did like, he go there? Right. Like, Rosanna, do do Rosanna all... Beach riding a jet ski? Right. Like, do Ugh. they all go to the same place when they get pruned, or are they like with other variants of themselves? All right, I'll put that down. You know, like, are there like, is Mobius in a place with other Mobiuses? I don't know. Okay. I put. Does everybody go to the same place when pruned? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's go over uh, theories. Um, so the Loki theory, 
that the TVA is actually stuck in the quantum realm. That's mm-hmm. yet to be come to fruition. Did, wait, did I send you the Tiki Talk that showed? So at the end, in the post credit scene of Ant Man and Wasp, when he's in the quantum realm, mm-hmm. when he, you know, when Hope and Janet and Hank, right before they get snapped, and okay. he goes in there, he takes like a canister and like gets all the particles. Right. And it's very similar to, so like he, all the particles get sucked into the canister. But is the canister like the canister they use? <gasps> it is. But when you see, so like in the beginning of this episode, when they erase Sylvie's timeline, yeah, the it gets spread out. But like in Ant-Man and Wasp, it gets sucked in. <gasps> so like, does it get sucked in oh. from the quantum realm? And then like you open it up and, and then oh, that's man. how it changes time. You know damn fucking well we are not going to get that answer. You no, know I want fucking it. well they're not going to answer right? that for us. God damn it. Yeah. Oh my God. That fucking have- fantastic, Alyssa. I got to I gotta find oh, that and send all it right. to you, girls. Yeah, send that to me. That's a great theory. I think I saw it and I think it was probably way too late. And I didn't want- well, that's <laughs> not a theory. You guys that's up. like a tidbit. Like, that's yeah. just a question. I don't know. But we got to, yeah. I'll put it somewhere in the notes, but I don't but know. But does it mean something? I mean, right. everything, well, means, everything something, means something, darling. Yes, it does. If there's anything I learned from you, that's what I learned. <laughs> all right. So your infinity stone theory, Alyssa, is looking pretty Spot on. Yeah. It's looking good. And then we really my theory. It's then the tiki got- talks. I'm not I'm not taking credit for that. <laughs> well, we just letting you know theory, her FDR theory that FDR is connected I'm to Mobius. I'm so somehow. excited. I wanna yeah. know. Yeah. So all right. Anything else, ladies? Do we have anything else? No, that's it. I think that's it. No, all right. Well, that, that's enough. That's all she wrote. Can I just say it's so lovely to see you too? You too. I know. Oh. God, come it's August, we're gonna tomorrow. record together. Ooh. Yes, I'm so excited! Yay! All righty, all right, Alyssa, what do you got for us, babe? Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and Anchor, and we are also on Facebook and Instagram. If you want to email us, uh, you have an idea. Or you have a theory. I, I would like to hear other people's alternate theories. Just throwing it out there. If you have a theory, if anything, you just want to get in contact with us, you can email. What did we say? To email me. Email us. If you want to know about something about how to make a hidden folder. Yes. If you want to know. How I, to make if a you have an no idea what the fuck Nikki's talking about. Yeah. That's <laughs> if okay. you have an iPhone. I don't need a hidden folder. I'm fine. Yeah. If you want to make a hidden folder, I usually just put pictures of like things that I need to remember to like purchase for Mr. So Big is birthday that and stuff. Where oh. you kept the the pictures of what I sent you after Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got it. Yes. So if you want to find out how you can make a hidden folder on your iPhone, you can email us at America's Asses Galcast at gmail.com. And Nikki and, will be the one responding to you because I don't know what she's talking yeah. about. <laughs> I think I did it once. Let you know. Yeah, I'll let you know. And I don't so, have it anymore. So there's also another thing that we'd really, really appreciate is if you could like us, love us, follow us, rate us, review us, and subscribe to us. And one more thing I love you. Love you. I love you. 3,000. <laughs>
for uh-huh. America's I know, asses. Like, weren't we talking about uh, No, we were going to get the event, the A. The, the A, A the with Avengers the six. Thing. Yeah. With the like six. what the original Avengers got, like Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, yeah. everybody but Mark <laughs> Ruffalo, because he's a chicken. <laughs> but everybody, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy hey. Renner, um, RDJ, they all got it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We got but something. That's what, we'll figure it out. We got time. Get. We got yeah. time. Dude, this weekend, I mean, it's, I'm yeah. sure it's not a big deal, but um, my like eating plan went out the fucking window. So I was eating yeah. frozen pizza at 1130 at night because <laughs> I was hungry because we were yeah. at my cousin's and we ate early. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then I was chasing around Nugget and I was in the pool with him and I was fucking hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I was eating frozen pizza at like so? 11, 11 30 at night and I'm like that shit's hmm. good you get yourself yeah, really a jack's good. pizza that's exactly what it was <laughs> it's the best frozen pizza jack's hey to be honest out of all the frozen pizzas jack's is the is the healthiest one the entire pizza is only 900 calories why well, that means 50 that there you go that's there all right go. if you that eat works. what 900 calories for the whole pizza that's a little over a little over a hundred calories a slice. You're good to go, girl. Don't yeah. worry. This has been America's Asses.